Discord is in the news because there is a spy site that is scraping Discord and selling users' messages. But these journalists didn't get the whole picture because I knew about this website a long time ago, and now I'm going to expose everything you need to know about this website, including the person behind it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spy.pet, where you get to explore Discord's data. With over 300 million users and still growing, we will see about that, because Discord's definitely going to do something about this website, but let's move on from that because what does this website do? Well, we have a nice little screenshot here that we can open up. Basically, it allows you to search up someone on Discord and figure out everything about them, invading every ounce of their privacy. You get their public information, like their usernames, nicknames, pronouns, and their connected accounts, but you also get to see what servers they're on and what messages they have sent. And it turns out that I am also included in the stalking regime because my Discord server is included in this screenshot. Now, here's the thing. This message was dated two days ago on April 17th, and when I Look for this message, it does exist. Someone is saving all of the messages inside of my Discord server. Now, if we go back to spy.pet, they advertise a couple of really great features, like enhanced user privacy. We prioritize your privacy as a user searcher. Your searches are secure and confidential, so that you can have privacy invading other people's privacy. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. In fact, it doesn't stop there, because this website is the definition of, like, straight brain dead. Because at the bottom, we have a handful of links. We have a transparency page. And if I open it up, there's nothing. And there's also this request removal page, which actually, if they care about your privacy, this is a fantastic thing. You get to remove your information from the website and not get tracked. And if I click on it... <laughs> Yeah, if it wasn't clear, this website does not care about your privacy whatsoever. This is complete nonsense, and really, what this website is made for is extremely obvious. Hello! I like money! Because this website operates off of a credit system, where you need to buy credits. Now, you need to spend a minimum of $5, and one credit equals one cent. So if you search for someone's profile and it's cached, it costs seven cents. But if the profile isn't cached with at least one server, then it costs ten cents. And you need to pay with cryptocurrency, because this person's trying to hide their identity. It would definitely be a shame if someone figured it out and put it in a YouTube video. I thought this was just a blatant money grab, but no, I genuinely think this person is either brain dead, stupid, or just completely not on this planet. Because they're offering an enterprise plan, where are you interested in training AI models with Discord messages? Everyone loves AI reading their messages. Or are you a group of federal agents looking for a new source of intel? Like any of this would ever happen from someone that doesn't care about your privacy. Or maybe something else? Well, we got you covered. Just contact us and let us know how we can help. Help. And I had to cut whatever I was about to say because I don't want to give you any ideas on what to do with this email. So at a surface level, this website allows you to track people on Discord. It also allows you to see what emojis are in certain Discord servers. And finally, they can track bans. Now I'm going to explain how this works later on, but let's just take a step back for a second. We have a website that is invading your privacy for profit. Yet by some modern day miracle of stupidity on the internet, we have journalists, specifically this 404 article. In this article, to put it lightly, is scuffed as all f This whole entire article feels like a paid-for ad. While on the other hand, the article also glosses over all of the problems with the website. You know how they care about your privacy, even though it's a privacy-invading platform? Well, the journalists talk about it, but they don't give any opinion. In fact, remember that request removal page that led to that Spider-Man clip? They talk about it, but have absolutely no opinion. Are these journalists scared of giving an opinion? Is the guy behind this website a big, bad, evil guy? Uh, am I seriously walking myself into doom here? Well, I don't care. Let's keep on continuing. And the best part about this article is that the spy.pet owner said that the intended customers could be people who are interested in what their friends are up to, and people who engage in open source intelligence. That is a complete lie. Spy.pet is not used for investigating your friends. It is solely used for harassment. And let me tell you why. You can actually request a server to be tracked. Due to the nature of the service, all invites are processed manually. Please refrain from submitting mass scraped invites. Instead, kindly submit servers that are interesting to track and often purge their messages, such as politics servers or debate servers. Also, I want to point out, he put my own Discord invite link in here because this dude is expecting me to make a video on this platform. But he definitely isn't expecting 
everything when I reveal who he is. I didn't want to make a video about this, but if I have to, then I'm gonna bring everything I got. But when I and a small group of people were checking out this website a couple months ago, this web page was a little bit different. Because instead of telling you to kindly submit servers that are politics servers or debate servers, instead it said kindly submit servers that are interesting to track, such as private LGBT BBQ Discord servers, politics servers, or debate servers. If it isn't obvious, this website is homophobic. But since they're now in the news, they've done everything they can to wipe away homophobia and transphobia, because guess what? It gets a lot worse. Because if you look at the website right now, you can see that we have Panley's profile as an example, and you can see that their pronouns match up with their Discord pronouns. But, oh, if you go back to April 17th, the cleanup is happening, like, as we speak. The example of Panley, they modified the pronouns manually to say a man to be transphobic. So it should be pretty clear that Spy.Pet is not a website intended for people who are interested in what their friends are up to. This is a tool used for harassment. And by the way, it gets worse. Now, like I said before, I knew about this website for a pretty long time, and I was working with a handful of other people to try and take this website down. And believe it or not, we did make a dent. Because the owner of Spy.Pet on their blog made a February 2024 update, or as I like to call it, the blog of cope. Because this blog post consists of two things. Them whining about being DDoSed, and them whining about their Coinbase account. The main change this month is Spy.Pet getting attacked by certain individuals who don't really want their messages archived. The first DDoS attack was on 2nd of February, and it sucked. This was my first experience with a DDoS, which is why I was unprepared as the master hacker, and the website went offline for a grand total of 14 minutes, which is nothing. And the rest of these paragraphs and paragraphs this dude has written is him just coping with the fact that he got DDoSed and how he is so awesome because it only lasted 50 minutes. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. No, I have to read this one. I was going to skip past it, but he was attacked by 73 million requests all right before he went on a walk before going to bed. And since he was using Cloudflare, he was able to peacefully walk in the night while certain individuals in certain parts of the world were sitting in front of a computer screen, chronically online individuals. I am significantly better than them. I'm setting up satire for when I actually reveal this person and what they do on the internet, but on their spy.pet website, if you go to donate the money, it uses Coinbase, which doesn't work right now because it got shut down. And the reason why this guy is more of an idiot than you think is because they have absolutely no idea why their Coinbase account got terminated. But the thing about Coinbase that I love the most is it has something called KYC, which means know your customer, where you need to send your ID to Coinbase to get money. I'm pretty sure if Discord's legal team wanted to figure out who this is, uh, Coinbase would be the people to contact. And speaking of Discord and their legal team, this website was brought up to Discord at the beginning of February. And here's the thing, they actually closed the tickets that reported this website, and it felt like Discord was doing nothing. But let me tell you, in the background, it takes time for Discord to arm the legal canon of doom. But you want to know what would be extremely unfortunate? If someone figured out who was behind this website to help Discord's legal team do their job. Oh, and look what we have here, a massive investigation figuring out who was behind this website that was all magically dropped to me by a group of anonymous individuals. But let's go through their investigation step by step to see how they figured out who was behind Spy.Pet. When you sign up for an account on Cloudflare, you get two randomly picked name servers. Now, these name servers apply for every single website I have on my Cloudflare account. So if I made no text -to speech 2com and put it on Cloudflare, these name servers would be the same as no text -to speech one because it's made under the same account. And here's the thing, these name servers are picked from a list of 51 boy names and 50 girl names, which gives you 2,550 unique combinations. So what this is doing is narrowing down the massive wide internet into a smaller group of people. And if we took a look at Spy.Pet, their name servers are Cass and Kyrie. And what these nerdy individuals did is they found out every single website that uses those two name servers. And you can see, we have Spy.Pet, but we also have another website here that gave us a clue, PreserveTube.com. If we look at PreserveTube.com right now, you can see that they both have the Cass and Kyrie name servers. And that was the first step of this investigation. They figured out PreserveTube. Now, I want to point out, if we look at PreserveTube on Whois, we can see that the registrar is pork bun for PreserveTube. And if we look at Spy.Pet, the registrar is also pork bun, which is another coincidence, another connection we could make, which we will add to the diagram. And also, both of these websites use the same tech stack. They use Astro. Now, I think the next thing we should focus on is who is behind PreserveTube. 
Archive. The Preserved Tube website is a website meant for archiving YouTube videos, and they have an example of Chris Chan, which is weird, but what we can do is we can actually go to their GitHub page, open it up. So I go to the Preserved Tube repo, I go to their commits, and I look for the oldest commit. So I just go to the very, very bottom, and we can see that the initial commit is made by someone called Unknown SRC. And believe it or not, that was, of course, the next step in the investigation. Now, if we take a look at Unknown's GitHub repo, we have a couple links we can look at. We have this unknown.sbs website. Sure, let's go to it. Now on their website, they have a Telegram, a GitHub, a Keybase, a Mastodon, and an email. So I'm gonna go to their Mastodon because I just wanna see, what are they all about? In the amazing journalism that I did, I figured out they really like cat photos with computers, like a lot. Like, look how cute this cat is. And honestly, this probably isn't the person behind the spy.pet website because they like cats. They're not transphobic or anything. Oh wait, hold on. I see that they have an image that says transphobia. And if I look at the thread, they sent someone a video. You will never be a real woman. Yeah, this unknown person is transphobic, which means that there is a small chance that this person could be the owner, but we need to investigate a little bit further. And while I was investigating this unknown guy, I wanted to point out that uh, they were also in a tech.lgbt mastodon instance and they moved. Not sure what's going on. And I also actually kind of know this person. I talked to them back a while ago on Discord and they were transgender and now they're homophobic? I am genuinely really confused. So we have the unknown.sbs website that links to a mastodon. It kind of seems like a dead end, but remember on the website, there's also a telegram account that we can look at. And this telegram account is called at unknown SRC. And ladies and gentlemen, the brain rot of unknown gets even better because if you go to their telegram account and you hover over it, they're also known as at transphobic. And the thing with that handle is that they spent $430 on getting the telegram name transphobic. Guys, I'm going to be honest. I've, I've been on the internet a very long time, but this is so stupid where I, I can't mentally understand why someone would waste $430 on this. But regardless, if they aren't the owner of spy.pet, then we just found another stupid person on the internet. But I did a little bit of my own digging on this unknown fella, and they're actually in a lot of Kiwi Farm Telegram channels where they say the most vile stuff on the planet. I can't show it on the screen because YouTube would take it down. And if you don't know, Kiwi Farms is basically a group of people on a forum that harass people online who are usually transgender people or people with autism. The coincidences between Spy.pet and this unknown person are piling up. And as the great High Elf once told me, there is no such thing as a coincidence. And guess what? There are more connections to look at because if you go on Spy.pet right now and you scroll down to the bottom, there is a music button that will take you to a random website out of a predefined list. So if I refresh the page, it was a YouTube page before. If I refresh it, it takes us to Spotify. If I refresh it, it will take us to another YouTube page. But the owner of Spy.pet made a little bit of a mistake that, oh, it got caught on the way back machine. Because back on April 17th, if we go down to this button, it takes us to an Odyssey page. And look what we have here. We have a video in Odyssey by someone named Unknown. And if we click on their profile, they also very much like cats. Now, the reason why this is important is that it's not on the website right now. It used to be on the website, but ever since the owner of Spy.pet has been cleaning up and removing all that transphobia, they also removed their Odyssey account. Because why would you remove a link to a Odyssey video about Rubensim unless it had your username inside of the link? But oh baby, this button just keeps on giving because in another archive of the website, if you hover over the button, it takes you to a Kiwi Farms page. And I decided, you know what? Let me just dive right into the cesspool. I went on Kiwi Farms, which is a mistake, and I searched for spy.pet, and believe it or not, these people are using spy.pet to aid in their harassment. The spy.pet website isn't meant to be used to find out what your friends are doing. It is meant to be used for harassment. And I can say that with confidence because there's a spy.pet account that also engaged in archiving people's messages to harass them. So we zoom out. We have spy.pet, and the next part of the investigation is we get that magic music button, which leads us to Kiwi Farms and Odyssey. But there's still one more connection, one more coincidence. Right now, I'm already 100% sold that this is the same person. But for the naysayers that don't believe me, here is my final prime example. If we go to the blog of spy.pet, if we scroll down to the very bottom, it is made with a service called Blogo, which if we open it up, it has its own GitHub page. And the thing with Blogo is that not a lot of people use it because there are very low stars on the repository. Usually it's best practice. If you use something and you like it, you star it. And if we go to the stars, let's just search for a familiar face, right? Let's uh, scroll. Are we going to see someone named unknown? Oh, I almost missed it. They're right there. Unknown star. 
start the GitHub repo of Blago, which they use for their blog service. So at the end of the day, that is basically the final step of the investigation, where if you scroll out, there are so many connections leading back to Unknown being the owner of SpyPet. But here's the thing. I want one more coincidence to tie Spy.Pet and Unknown together. And what I remembered is that on the Spy.Pet website, they put my own Discord server, which means, are they a fan or something? So I actually went into my Discord server, and ladies and gentlemen, I found this Discord profile that was in my Discord server that had the username Unknown S R C. And when I searched for their user ID, they actually left a couple days ago, as if they're trying to make sure they don't get caught. Now this person likes cats, but imagine being exposed from a cat photo. Because here's the thing, <laughs> I can't keep a straight face, but I searched for the username Spy.Pet, who was in my Discord server and is still in my Discord server. This cat photo is the same cat photo as the one in the Mastodon instance. Now, keep in mind, if we search this image on Google, it's from just some friendly person on Reddit showing a picture of their cat. With everything combined, you cannot tell me with a straight face that this unknown person doesn't own Spy.Pet. So my investigation is now closed. But is this unknown fella a skilled hacker and someone that we should be scared of? Well, no. To be honest, this guy is an absolute nobody because the Spy.Pet website did the exact same thing another website before it did. And that website was called Dis.Cool, which people also had a hissy fit about for good reasons. It's invading your privacy. And where is Dis.Cool now? It got completely nuked. But this still raises the question, how does Spy.Pet work? Well, it's actually really simple, and I'm going to tell you exactly how. Basically, what happens is that Spy.Pet has a whole bunch of Discord accounts. These are not bot accounts. These are normal Discord accounts that are controlled by bots. And what they do is they join big Discord servers, like mine, for example, because with my Discord server, it's hard to tell out of all these members that join, which one of these are some hidden bot that's trying to steal my messages. But what these Spy.Pet accounts do is they sit in a Discord server and they save every single message that is sent and they put it into a database. And reminder, this account is not a Discord bot. This is not a Discord bot data breach. This is a normal Discord account that usually has a really weird username with numbers and letters, and it's controlled by a bot to scrape messages. And that is specifically how they figure out what servers you're in and what messages you sent. And the same goes for voice calls. They just monitor voice chats to see if someone joined or if someone left. But the new thing that I really haven't seen before is that they monitor bans. And people really get tripped up by this because they think if spy.pet can see the bans of a Discord server, that must mean it's a Discord bot. But here's the thing. When you ban someone off Discord, that ban event is actually a public event. If you open up your Discord enough and monitor everything, you can see when people get banned and it shows up for everyone. And all they're doing is putting it on a website. It's a little nerdy, but trust me, it is not a Discord bot being breached. All right, so this unknown person isn't a skilled hacker, but they're tracking my important messages, right? N no, not at all. But I'm going to search up my own Discord user. So I paste in my user ID, I press search, and we get to see everything about me. You get to see my nicknames and other Discord servers. You can see my previous username. You can see all the servers that I'm in. And you can also see my messages, which are useless because this is in a public Discord server. The no text to speech Discord server is public. It's big. It's like going on Twitter and sending a message. What people really need to realize is that when you go on Discord and you send a message, if it has your personal information, whatever it has, a lot of people can see it when you click send. And there's something called message loggers, which allow you to store deleted messages messages. And here's the thing. I would not assume that spy.pet is the only website that is doing this. Always assume that someone is going to save your message. Okay, 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 okay. So this unknown person isn't a skilled hacker. They're just doing basic stuff. They aren't really selling private data because you're posting it in a public Discord server, but they are smart by making money, right? No, not at all. Because this unknown person with their spy.pet website have hit the apex of f***ing around and finding out. Because here's the thing. They're actually is a good article about this, and they explain that the spy.pet website is very much not allowed because it violates Article 6 of the GDPR. Legitimacy of processing personal data hinges on consent or necessity. You did not consent to your information being scraped. Article 17 of the GDPR says that you have the right to be forgotten, and remember, if you go on their website and you click opt out, oh, now they just changed it. Oh, they're not doing anything with this, by the way. They're just doing this so they don't
don't get sued to oblivion. Wow, he it's actually live. That is crazy. I caught that live. That's funny. But that doesn't mean anything because Article 8 of the GDPR says that you can't store the data of minors without parental consent. So you're not consenting to this information, and if you're a kid, you're not consenting to this information, or your parent isn't consenting. Unknown dog? I don't know what brain rot you have, but updating your website to have this fake opt-out that won't go anywhere in light of recent controversies? Uh, I don't know what this fella's trying to do, but it's obvious they're pretty stupid. Yeah, I realize I didn't make it extremely clear, but do not send your information to any of these emails because they're probably going to use it to dox you. So, uh, just wait until this website blows up and dies, okay? But here's the thing. We all don't need to worry because Discord's legal team is cranking up the long arm of the law, baby. And they're definitely going to show up now because I basically told them who runs the website. But here's the thing. If Unknown takes this website down, then I, no text-to-speech, get to say that I rule his sad, pathetic little life and I got him to take down the website because of this stupid YouTube video. Are they going to take down the website? Admit defeat to a brain-dead YouTuber? Or are they going to thug it out for as long as they can? And then Discord's going to smack the shit out of them, which will be hilarious. Spy.pet learned the most important lesson you can get on the internet. If you f*** with people's privacy, do not be shocked when they spend every waking hour figuring out who you are. However, with that gamers, I want to say, leave this battle between unknown and their half-functioning brain and Discord senile and slow legal team. Do not get involved. Anywho, have a good one. Bye-bye. I love you. Mwah.